Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. I have another review for you. Uh, this time from the uh, same company whose product I tested uh, uh, a week ago, the uh, GR Research. Except that it's not a speaker, but a uh, modification uh, to an existing commercial speaker, namely the uh, Klipsch uh, RP600M. Um, this is a you know, classic uh, modern, I would say, clip speaker. Uh, the modification, you can uh, watch the video the company has. Unfortunately, it doesn't show you the actual pictures of the, uh, uh, the uh, upgrade. And you got to watch the video, and I'll let you go to their website and do that. Um, the uh, speaker was delivered to me with the kit already installed by the custom by the member and so I don't have a picture of it either but uh, again in the video there's explanation there uh, on you know what was changed and why I uh, yeah, tested the stock uh, RP600M and I gave it my worst rating possible the Headless Panther uh, and uh, the main reason is that it just has this giant trough in frequency response and I don't know about you, but I don't want this chunk of my music taken out of everything I listen to. This is a very important part of, uh, you know, music spectrum. Which a lot of, I call it, you know, life of music is in here. And you just can't do this. Uh, what the motivation was for the company, I don't know. Um, I guess they thought having less energy in here is a good thing. And, you know, people focus on the highs and the lows. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was, uh, you know, created the what, what I call a showroom sound. So at any rate, um, we've got the new one, and uh, uh, you already see the upgraded uh, Panther rating. Excuse me, let me take my headphones out. Um, so uh, I'd, uh, again, I apologize for not having the uh, kit for you to show. Uh, but one thing I can show you is that the, the, it comes with these uh, uh, tube connectors that uh, uh, companies are superior to the standard binding uh, post. But, uh, you know, you have the option of paralleling them. In this case, this thing had dual bindings. Uh, and so the customer took advantage of that by removing one of the binding posts. And then these two are wired together. So I only tested them with the uh, standard posts. At some future uh, time, I'll do analysis of, of these tube connectors. I just didn't want to uh, compound this testing with that. Okay. Um, as always, these measurements are, are performed using a Quillipole uh, near-field scanner, which means that what you're getting is an uh, uh, echo-free, uh, responsive speaker as if it's uh, in a giant space with no walls and no boundaries. And uh, so we get a very, very detailed view. The format of this uh, review uh, naturally is different in that I'm going to show everything in the A-B comparison, so you can see the old and the new at the same time. Uh, hopefully you have a high resolution device and you can see this uh, uh, these Y format uh, graphs. Um, if you don't, just listen to my voice and you can see at high level what's going on anyway. So refreshing our memory again, this is the uh, old stock RP600M, which by the way has been upgraded to a new version and this is substantially fixed in the new version by the company. Um, but you know we know it's clearly wrong, but one cool thing about it is that if you look at these three graphs, uh, the uh, black line is the on-axis response, to the, to just the one beam. Um, this red one is entire sound field around the speaker, and the uh, uh, blue one is uh, sort of early reflections. And all three of them follow each other, which means that if you adjust the on-axis up, these other three will follow which is great, that means equalization is perfect, and indeed I EQ'd the speaker and it completely transforms it from a crappy speaker to a very nice speaker. Um, and, but obviously you can do the same thing using crossover modifications, and indeed that's what we see in here. Uh, that hole is now filled in, and we now have a far flatter response, still not perfect, we have some glitches here and there, but you know, you're gonna get that in, in many speakers and certainly in budget speakers and their port resonances and so forth that creep through. Um, we can diagnose what's going on a little bit better by uh, doing what is called near field management uh, measurements. That means I uh, forget about what I said about reflections and stuff. We can stick the microphone directly in front of the, uh, uh, the drivers and thereby swamp the reflections and, and get more or less what comes out of that one radiator without taking apart the speaker and separating those. If you look at this stock one, uh, we see this hole in the crossover region because these two are rolling off 
too sharp and too far away from each other. If they move closer, they'll you know, level out, but they chose to have them this way and chose them to be sharp. If you look at the modified version, uh, what the company has done is instead of taking those filters that were sharp, is putting more shallow filters. Now, oftentimes that causes problems in that you, you, you're letting the uh, woofer play far uh, higher frequencies than it would normally do, and you could have breakups and so forth. Uh, but in this case, we get lucky in that the driver seems to handle, uh, the woofer seems to handle uh, these higher frequencies, and I see no breakups in here. So, it, and the benefit of that is that you need less part. Uh, this company sells you, you know, if you will, premium parts for these kinds of uh, enhancements. So every time he has to add another element, the price escalates rapidly. And so it's good news in this case that, you know, he opted to have a um, lower slope and lower slope work. Um, this speaker, by the way, is two and a half pounds heavier than the stock one. Literally, when you pick it up, you're like, whoa, this is heavier. Uh, I think the other one's 16 pounds, the stock one, and this is 19 and a half pounds. Or, so if you do the tap test on the side, it feels more solid. It has this uh, uh, no res, as the company calls it, uh, uh, damping material that's been applied to the enclosure. And, and together with the weight of the uh, um, enclosure, it's, it adds a lot more heft to it. By the way, the knuckle test is kind of useless. It's a salesman technique to sell you on more stout cabinets. You really got to measure to see what resonances there are in a cabinet. I don't care how stout it is from knuckle tests. You're not activating the speaker with a knuckle. You're activating it with the drivers internally. Anyway, um, but, you know, bottom line is that it actually is far cleaner in what comes out of the port. So this, uh, I'll put a microphone next to the port, and we can see that uh, in here with the stock thing, we have two clear resonances that are probably created due to the dimensions of the speaker. You get resonances, basically sound goes, hits one wall, reverses, comes back and adds to itself. So even though the port output is reduced, um, you know, but, but these resonances often start amplifying. In this one, those are nicely suppressed, far lower, and at any rate, they were, you know, we're kind of lucky that the first one of these is where the woofer is very strong, but the second one in the old design was right when the woofer response was dropping. But here, um, the stronger woofer response would dwarf these things anyway. What caused that, whether it was the no res or padding is different or too much of it in there now or it's moved around, I can't tell. You know, this is not a controlled study. <laughs> we're just comparing, you know, one stock that I bought, speaker I bought a year ago to come, uh, a member who bought this used and applied these modifications. But the end result is what we see in here, and clearly uh, credit needs to be uh, given that, you know, the speaker with a mod has you know, solves this big problem in here and solves the crossover. So we now look at the early reflections. These are, and I promise you guys, by the way, I'll do a full in-depth uh, video one day of all these graphs and what they mean and how to interpret them. But for now, um, just, you know, bear with me. The original one, as I said, what comes out of the front on axis also comes out all the way around. So we get this massive trough in the original one and that trough is now filled a lot more. So the deviation from this trend line is far less so. Uh, the, not only is the sound directly hitting you, it's improved, but also the one that hits the wall. So same as if I'd done equalization. Uh, put the two together and apply a little bit of math. We can predict from these anechoic uh, measurements what sound you're likely to get in your uh, room. And we like to see a, a you know, sloping down line and a graph that you know, ideally matches at 100%, but it, it never uh, almost does. And uh, this is as good a compliance as you could expect from a budget product uh, or even more expensive products. Uh, here, we obviously have our you know, single hole in here. Otherwise, the compliance was excellent. It's just this one darn hole in here. So as far as frequency response improvements, there's no doubt objectively that we've made things better with the GR mod. Um, and then let's look at the distortion. This is tricky business because um, you have to, uh, you know, to do a proper AB in here, you have to match levels. But in the stock one, we have a big hole in there. So the output level is different than the other one. So to compensate for that partially, I'm showing you just the relative output. It wouldn't make sense to show you the absolute output when the two frequency responses are different. So we take a ratio of distortion to the frequency response, then that ratio nulls out the frequency response differences. Um, at 86 dB SPL, there is a difference in here uh, post the base distortion that's, that's there, excuse me, in this class speaker, um, that 
there's this hump, pronounced hump, which you can see better, actually. Let's go down to a 96 dB. Uh, this roundish hump is kind of unusual. Why is there? Um, you know, I didn't set out to figure out why he's doing this. But there's this broad distortion in the woofer in here that like a one, one hump. In here, it appears with a GR mod, it appears that that hump has been reduced uh, in, in, you know, because the, it sort of is there, but it's lower, but then it's replaced with this sharp peak in distortion. Whenever you see the sharp peak in distortion, it's really not a distortion. It's usually a resonance. I mean, something's amplifying. And uh, what is the cause of that? Who knows? Um, could be the new parts are resonating, maybe the wiring resonating, uh, maybe, you know, when you take it apart, put it back together. Uh, now the, the driver and the cabinet are coupled differently and it causes a resonance in here. Interesting enough, the uh, member that sent this to me, he thought he was hearing resonance between two to 400 hertz and wanted to see if the measurements would show it. And, you know, measurements do work and it does show it in here. But I, again, I can't put any blame on the design of the mod itself. Uh, why would it create a new sharp resonance? I don't know. So I, I would say in balance, uh, we have less distortion with the mod in here. Uh, you know, perceptually how uh, you know important that is. That's complex. Um, I uh, went ahead and ran the uh, uh, CSD waterfall uh, plot, and this thing is very tricky to get right and and do a proper A/B test again because of the frequency response matter uh, changes. So therefore what elongates in time also changes. But, you know, doing my best to sort of, you know, with thumb in the air, <laughs> matching the two, it appears that the mod with the GR research has less resonances. If you look in here in this region, there's less extension in here than there is in here. And that, this is caused, by the way, in the pre frequency response peak in here, there's some kind of resonance uh, in the uh, re response. Uh, oh, by the way, this probably, oh yeah, this is the port resonances, uh, I forgot. So the port resonances add some amplification in here, but also the resonances so they ring in time. So yeah, that explains that. Sometimes it's good to explain things to other people and realize new stuff yourself. So anyway, another way of finding resonances is to look at the frequency response, uh, I'm sorry, the phase and uh, amplitude response. And whenever you get these little tiny little wiggles in it, it usually indicates there's a resonance in there. Uh, where uh, the impedance and, and uh, of the uh, the whole system changes, but it changes very slightly, so you just have to pay attention. And we see one over here that's pronounced, and then we see you know a few finer ones over here. Uh, whereas we go with the mod, there's just that first one is there, and the rest of them are extremely clean in here. You can see this curve in here is clean. This one is just modulated. So okay, now I'm going to give you some bonus to people who read the text review last night, uh, you guys watching a video, and I will now update the text review. Um, when I post this, I didn't have these older measurements for the uh, stock version of these three DirectV plots, and I went to uh, recompute them this morning and managed to get them updated. So if we look in here, beam width is, if we keep the uh, loudness constant, how wide of a you know, shaft of sound comes at you, and the wider this is, the more room you have to sit and that tonality doesn't change. Uh, but also it means it'll hit the sidewise, side walls and come back and that can have a diffused effect that can be positive. And it is research shows a positive way 80, 90% of people, 10 to 20% of people don't like that. They want to have more pinpoint imaging, uh, even though in live music, go listen to a band is never pinpoint, you know, it comes out as a band or orchestra, it's just diffused hall sound. But anyway, um, so we measured this and this red line is at 6 dB, so I've color coded this thing. And we see that with the mod, uh, this line is pretty constant and controlled and then starts to narrow. It narrows because that Twitter will start to beam and, and, and get smaller. The unmodified version is a little worse, even though that's just a function of the physical construction of the speaker, which hasn't been changed. The reason it's worse is because it had that trough in output in here. So if you add that back in, as the mod does, then that makes it a little bit better. Um, overall, though, this is a narrow directivity speaker. It's only f uh, plus or minus 50 degrees. The most average number I get is plus or minus 60 degrees. So it's 10 degrees on each side has been... Uh, chopped off. That can increase sensitivity and clips is known for sensitivity and a more focused uh, beam, but um, you know, it's, it's a, mostly a drawback, but again, 10 or 20% of people 
like that. And a lot more than I think they wanted, but when you do a blind test, they, they prefer the other one. So same graph, we can look at it as a heat map horizontally, and you can see that this is sort of sloping down like this, and this one sort of goes constant for a while, and then, uh, you know, laws of physics take over and, and it narrows down. Uh, vertically is a puzzle um, because the standard one has a very classic look to it, which is you have a two drivers and they're not coincident. And so as you go up and down, it uh, the timing changes. So you get cancellations at certain frequencies. And that's what, where these two eyes are created in here. Uh, and uh, when you s listen to the speaker, you don't want to, this is the vertically, this would be right at the Twitter axis vertically. If you go up or down, uh, you can fall in these two ditches in here. And usually that only gives you 10 or 20 degrees of room to go up and down. So that's what's important to put these on stand and vertically have them almost always point at your face or at your ear. And the more latitude in, you have in here, the better it is. If your stand is too, too low, just tip the speaker up and that'll do the same thing. Um, so we, this is classic, but here we have a very complex radiation pattern in here, so with the crossover modification has been performed, the response of the two drivers is very different, they're overlapping more, and it creates this, you know, called the shredded response. So the little eyes are now way uh, more uh, messed up in here, which means that your vertical um, dispersion, uh, what hits the ceiling and what hits the floor, is becomes a lot more different than the on-axis sound. So in theory, that's more coloration. Um, now, if you put a carpet on the floor, like, like I do a thick carpet, by the way, one or two inches thick, you want to have shack carpet <laughs> on this thing. A thin carpet will not absorb down to, uh, you know, one or two thousand hertz. Um, you want it to have one or two inches or put some padding under. If you do that, that mitigates some of this. That means these reflections will die off. Uh, for the ceiling one, having a high ceiling helps or have an absorber up there helps to kill these things. Fortunately, because the uh, the reflections that go up and down, they come at the same axis and the same distance to our two ears, they don't have the spatial qualities that uh, horizontal reflections have. So horizontal reflections, one comes from the wall, one comes from the speaker. So there's a distance between them and, and our ears pick them up differentially. And so there's perceptual improvement, like I said, in, in preference for that sound. Vertically, that doesn't happen. And it's, in general, it's very hard to uh, 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 characterize the impact of vertical reflections and how they are. So, um, uh, you know, so I'd say even though this visually looks a lot worse in here, practical impact of it is not that much. Um, so, you know, but objectively it's worse <laughs> Put it that way. But subjectively, we either don't know or we tend to not be, I certainly I'm not that critical about that. So um, for listening test, I um, uh, started with um, uh, the stock speaker uh, and to refresh my memory of, of what it sounded like. And by the way, when I did, did the listening test, I didn't have any of these comparisons. Um, so I just knew that the trough was there in the frequency response. Uh, but other than that, I didn't know about all the directivity differences and so forth. And um, oh, before I go too far, uh, let me scroll back uh, in very, very important point here. Um, this correction came at a price. If you look over here, the original one actually has peaks that go above 91 dB and Twitter is ab above 90 or 91 dB. You've lost about two and a half to three dB of, of, uh, of uh, sensitivity with this mod. So to, we, we didn't just fill this hole in, the whole thing has been pulled down too at the same time. So what this means is that you now need more amplification power to get to the same level and potentially now you're driving the drivers harder and uh, excuse me, and you could be distorting. And I'll get to that in a second. So I, I listened to the uh, stock speaker and, uh, you know, day in, day out, I listened to the same clip and I'm testing headphones, testing speakers, and next I'm testing headphone speaker. So I've got my stock, uh, you know, same tracks always. By the way, uh, reviews you want to ignore are the ones that keep telling you, ah, I pulled out this new album I just listened to. It's like, forget about it, you know. <laughs> Listen to the same bloody track all the time because you're testing speakers. I don't want a music lesson from you <laughs> or, or what this album 
album is that listen to the same bloody top, yeah, uh, track and I've listened five or ten thousand times to these same tracks uh, I listened to the first five tracks I listen to all the time in sequence and as soon as I play them it just in my mind I have this picture of neutrality and and pleasantness and, and good sound that it just was not there the highs were bright um, and usually that brightness with it brings detail and other goodness but it's I guess I, I don't know how to describe it by word but it just like when those tones come when the vocals come they're all recessed and it just doesn't sound right so I, I didn't like it now and didn't like it then so I put aside the speaker the original 600M and plug this in there and it was just night and day difference uh, you know the sound was a lot more full bodies a lot more balanced uh, it, it just was uncanny and, and you know, unmistakable. Uh, yes, the sighted test, yes, I knew about the measurements, but, you know, you don't get to take out a chunk out of one speaker in the frequency response and then put it back with another and say, oh, your sighted test means nothing. No, all of us will notice when you fill in a massive dip and, you know, one to three killers. And... Overall, was was very very good sound. The highs were a little uh, bothersome, and I did have to crank it up a little bit more. And when I crank it up, the bass gets distorted in a very unusual way. I can't describe it, but it, it just gets uh, you know, non-linear in, in an odd way. But if you uh, stay below you know very loud levels, uh, then it was fine. And uh, on this thing, but I, I was curious about this high, so I pulled out my Revel 105 uh, uh, speaker that I keep on hand for comparison tests. And even though that's an expensive speaker, it's got a small woofer, it's a small cabinet than this, and it just was not as nice. It's just bass is so important to our perception that even though Revel is a much fancier premium product, it could not compete with this, with the mod. Um, but I also have a Revell M15, which is similar size to this, still a little smaller. And boy, that one was a joy. So I was listening to it and you know, couldn't put my finger on what, why all of a sudden you know, it sounded so much better. I mean, the tonality was perfect and it was just a great sounding speaker. I think it's $1,000 uh, list price. You can get it discounted. Um, but then I switched back to modded uh, uh, 600M and instantly the vocals and everything shrunk right into the middle of the cone and the uh, horn. And it was very dramatic and a proof of the objective uh, data I showed you on a beam width that this thing, it's projecting a, a narrower beam and, uh, and therefore it's not sending much to the sidewalls that then diffuse the uh, speaker. Uh, I listened to one speaker, by the way, and this kind of spatial effects is still quite clear because it's a function of the sound, uh, direct sound and reflected sound. And... Um, so there's no question that the Revell, and that's their design philosophy, is to have a, a you know, wider uh, 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 dispersion, which then takes advantage of the sidewall reflections to give you uh, this larger halo, you know, more lifelike is what I call it, on this thing. Um, but again, there are 10 or 20% of people that like this aspect when they listen in stereo, because the two then can make a sound stage of the instruments are more precisely positioned. But to me, in listening to mono, clearly, uh, you know, that collapse and, and even though it was focused, I, I did not like that effect. I don't want to, uh, my eyes and ears, pay attention to where things are all of a sudden. You know, I was enjoying this female, great tracks, and, and uh, it was just, I was, you know, it was a big band playing in front of me all of a sudden, one woof, you know, inside of a speaker. So uh, to me, the M15, was a superior speaker but if i were to rate them the uh, stock speaker was down the hole the uh modified uh, rp600m is way up here and uh, uh the uh, revel uh, m15 was here so it wasn't a big gap and subjectively some people may like that pinpoint imaging that this may bring on this thing so back to the dynamics um uh, first, you have to have a powerful amp, and I did. I had a Purify uh, amp by uh, Audiophonics driving it, and uh, 
and there's this cliff in the base that gets distorted and you hit it a little bit earlier with this because you got to crank it up more a very small difference um and uh, uh on this thing so uh, it's not a big concern but if you have a puny 10 watt amp you're using to drive this because you thought clipses are very sensitive then you might not want to make this mod but if you were wise and bought a proper amplifier with a lot more wattage than you think you need right now you should be fine <clears throat> So where, where do we land? Uh, this was an easy test case. The one flaw with the speaker frequency response and that flaw was directly a function of the crossover design, which likely was intentional. And so it was a classic, classic sort of a baseline test of can GR research improve the frequency response? And the answer is un undoubtedly yes. We've done the job, was promised what you get. Um, the measurements prove it. And well, there are a lot of subtle differences here and there that you know our analysis and tools and measurements are very precise, gives us a lot of insights. So we not only learn about this mod, but we also learn about speakers in general. Um, you know, we can drill down, but at high level, you pay $244 and, and you get an improved speak, much improved speaker. Now, the debate is, you know, that plus the cost of the speaker, should you go buy a new speaker? Well, there's a version two of this out, which means that the version one is now being sold off at very attractive prices. And, um, and you can buy them used for much lower price. So combined, I think the owner is out only $500 or something like that for speakers and uh, and the mod. And of course, you got to put in the time, tear the thing up, build a new crossover, put it back together. Um, so, but assuming that time is free, um, you know, I'm not here to complain. Uh, from my point of view, you know, I'll just apply the equalization. So with one filter to one second, I can turn it on and off and I can change it and, and I didn't lose sensitivity either. Uh, but I understand some people don't like to use EQ and uh, um, I'll talk about why that's a bad thing in the future. Uh, but uh, if you're not inclined to want to do that and you're ready to tear into a speaker and buy the parts and make a project out of it, more power to you. In the text review, if you want to go on ASR forum, there are a lot of discussions about pros and cons of this thing. Okay, hopefully you uh, uh, got something out of this review beyond the uh, just the basics. Uh, uh, again, just you know, thumbs up on the uh, upgrade kit from uh, GR Research uh, for this specific uh, speaker. Okay, see you in a future video. Bye bye.